29. CPS Geometry. The Incommensurables. Pythagoras is remembered these days, as the discoverer of the most important theorem of geometry. But the truth is, the Pythagorean theorem, was known, long before Pythagoras, by Babylonians and Egyptians, among many others. There is another important discovery, made by Pythagoreans, that is, as fundamental as the Pythagorean theorem, to mathematics and science, the discovery of the incommensurable quantities. Let's try to understand this concept. When presented with similar quantities, one of the first things we do, in our minds, is to compare them. Let's imagine we are shown two line segments, A and B. Most of the time, a simple visual inspection and rapid mental evaluation of the lengths of two segments, let us make one of the following judgments calls. 1. A, is bigger than B, or 2. A, is smaller than B, or 3. A, is equal with B. To get a more precise assessment of the lengths of the two segments, relative to each other, we need to move to a new level of understanding, and quantify this. This implies moving from comparing the two line segments to actually measuring them. Measuring similar quantities is a process that solves the following problem. If A and B, are two similar quantities, find the smallest quantity C, such that both initial quantities, A and B, can be obtained by doing multiple additions of C. The quantity, C, is the common unit of measurement for both A and B. When applied to natural numbers, the best implementation of this process is known as the Euclidean algorithm. The problem can now be restated. If, A and B are two integers, find the greatest number C, such that, C divides both A and B. In this case, the number C is called the greatest common divisor. The Euclidean algorithm solves this problem using a series of similar steps. Before we start, let's assume that A is greater than B. Step 1, divide A by B, and call the reminder B1. Step 2, divide B by B1, and call the reminder B2. Step 3, divide B1 by B2, and call the reminder B3. Continue this process until the reminder is equal with zero. The last non-zero reminder is the greatest unit of measurement, between the two numbers, or the greatest common divisor. Let's call this number, C. Working our way back, and substituting the reminders in each step, one can easily see that both initial numbers, A and B, are multiples of C. A better way to visualize this process is to use line segments. If we start from two line segments of length 80 and 12, then Step 1 80 equals 12 by 6 plus 8. The first reminder is 8. Step 2 12 equals 8 by 1 plus 4. The second reminder is 4. Step 3 8 equals 4 by 2 plus 0. The third reminder is zero. So, we have. The greatest common divisor is the last non-zero reminder and is equal with four. Of course, both 80 and 12 are divisible by four. Looks like we have a very powerful way of measuring any two segments, or any two quantities, for that matter. But let's look deeper into this process and its implementation done by this algorithm. Knowingly or not, we have in fact, cheated. By starting from two integers we have already assumed the existence of a common unit between these numbers. Every integer number is in fact defined as a multiple of number 1. The process, as described above, always finds the greatest integer that divides both initial numbers. In the worst case scenario, this number is 1. Then the initial numbers, A and B are relative prime numbers. We have also assumed, a common unit of length, between the segments A and B, 
when visualizing the algorithm using line segments. But is this true for any line segments? Plato's dialogue, entitled Meno, records a discussion between Socrates and a slave boy, regarding the problem of doubling the square. Next, let us use a similar approach to explain the concept of incommensurability. Let's consider a square, PQRS, and draw one of its diagonal, PR. Let's call the length of diagonal, A, and the length of the side of the square, B. Next, let's attempt to find the common unit of length, between the diagonal of the square, and the side of the square, using the algorithm described above. We start this process by overlapping a segment with a length equal with the size of the square, over the diagonal of the square. From this construction we have The diagonal, PR, is equal with the length, PT, plus the reminder, TR. Now, we have to compare the length of the square, QR, with the reminder, TR. If, PV, is the bisector of the angle, QPT, then QV, is equal with, TV. Also, triangle, RTV, is isosceles, so, TR, is equal with, TV. In conclusion, the following three segments are all equal with each other. RT, TV, and QV. RTVW, is a square with the size equal with the reminder found in the first step. To better understand this, we can see how the size of the square, RTVW, changes, when, PT, rotates around the point P. When, PQ, and, PT, overlap, the two squares, PQRS, and, RTVW, are equal. Let's concentrate next on the square, RTVW. To increase the clarity and visibility of the next few steps, we will zoom into this square, and center it on the screen. Now, we repeat the process done on the initial square, PQRT. The segment, VX, is equal with the size of the square, RTVW. VR, is the diagonal of the same square. From this construction we have The diagonal, VR is equal with the length, vx, plus the reminder, xr. Now, we have to compare the reminder, xr, with the size of the square, rtvw. It should be very clear by now that this process, will continue indefinitely. At each step, we have smaller and smaller squares, but we will never find a common unit between the diagonal and the size of a square. The process simply never ends. This is a very, very profound discovery. Its significance cannot be overstated, doesn't matter how hard one might try. Since the Pythagorean's discovery, we encapsulate this finding, in the statement. The diagonal and the size of a square, are incommensurable. But, in the same time, we never stop trying to find a way to measure them. This is pathetic. The diagonal of the unit square is expressed today as being equal with the square root of 2. When trying to express this quantity as a number, one has to use the number 1, as the unit. One way, of expressing the number square root of 2, is to use continued fractions. Looking back at the process described above, this expression makes much more sense now. R1, and the square root of 2 the only pair of incommensurable magnitudes. As documented by Plato, in his dialogue Theodotus, Theodorus has discovered a full set of incommensurable magnitudes. We will look into these magnitudes in the next video.